Sam. Thank you for pledging our Patreon. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Film Fridays. Yes, finally. I know. I know. So back around November, December, so many of you have been asking me if I've seen Sound of Metal and if I would do a video on it. And the answer to both of those questions is yes. I actually got to see the film back in October when Amazon hired me to do a consultation for them, which they already did the film, they already finished it when they asked me, but okay. If you don't know what Sound of Metal is, it is available on Amazon Prime. It's about a guy named Ruben Stone. He is a hearing man, he is a drummer, and at some point his hearing just goes like that, the majority of his hearing. And so he's spending his time trying to cope with this sudden hearing loss, and also he gets pushed into the deaf community and he's trying to figure all that out while just, you know, trying to navigate both the hearing world and his new deaf world. So if you're looking forward to this review, if you are looking forward to any future Film Fridays episodes, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. So a quick disclaimer, obviously this is just going to be my opinion. This is going to be my opinion on the film as a deaf woman who grew up mainstream, didn't start signing at all until she was 23 years old, and trying to find the deaf community and her own identity. There are various opinions, good and bad, all across the whole deaf community here, so don't just take my opinion as the one and only, obviously. First things first, right off the bat, if you know me, you know that I always am for deaf actors playing deaf roles, and the two main deaf characters in this are both played by hearing people. Ruben is played by Riz Ahmed, and Joe is played by Paul Racy. Now, there is a difference between the two hearing actors. Riz is just straight up hearing man who had no, like, real, what's the word I'm looking for? He was never involved in a deaf community, and he never learned ASL. He learned ASL for seven months for the film. But Paul Racy is a CODA, aka a child of deaf adults. So he has deaf parents, he grew up using ASL, and I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, he's in a band, he has a band, and they incorporate ASL a lot in it. So you know, obviously for Ruben's character, you could find an oral deaf man to play the role. You could find a late deafened oral, or both oral and signing deaf man to play the role really. And the same with Joe's character. You can find somebody. But I mean, would I rather have a Coda play a deaf character since he's familiar with ASL? He's familiar with deaf people, at least more so than someone like Riz, who has probably never really met many deaf people ever. Uh, maybe. Yeah, but you know. With that said, out of everything that I've seen with a hearing man playing a deaf character, and I do understand that there's a difference. There might be a little bit of a difference when the character is so late deafened. Riz is almost 40 years old, so I'm guessing that his character is going to be around, you know, 30s, early 30s, late 30s. I, I guess maybe I can see what they're going with that. But anyways, that being said, I do find that Riz probably is the more convincing out of all these other characters that I've seen or out of all these hearing actors trying to play a deaf character. Way, way better than uh, that woman playing the character in Hush anyway. And now I'm just gonna go through all these notes that I've written down as I was watching a movie. A lot of hearing people seem to think that when you're deaf, it's just, you know, that's it. You can't hear anything. You can't understand anything. One way to describe my hearing, I would say, is in that audiogram scene when he first goes to the audiologist and you hear a little bit of sound. You hear a little bit of the audiologist talking, but you really don't understand what he's saying, especially because they have the paper right in front of their mouths, right? That is what it's like for a lot of deaf people. A lot of deaf people do have residual hearing, but it doesn't really do much good. <laughs> Now, of course, I know Ruben wasn't supposed to be completely deaf yet then, so it makes sense, but still, that's just how it is for a lot of us. And, you know, he gets a lot of the words wrong. A lot of the times I'm trying to follow along in conversation, and unless I know context, I'm probably getting it almost everything wrong. In fact, even if I do know context, I'm probably still wrong. And then fast forward a little bit into the audiology scene. They talk about the possibility of cochlear implants, and one thing that the audiologist says is that cochlear implants are not covered 
cover by insurance. Now research shows and also friends of mine who have cochlear implants and deaf Twitter going around. To my knowledge, cochlear implants do get covered by insurance. Perhaps not the whole thing, perhaps not all insurance covers it. But I feel like from what I've been told years ago from audiologists and also just now with all the research and you know word from other deaf people who have had these things, hearing aids are much more difficult to get covered by insurance than cochlear implants. So I'm not sure where they're going with this. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Also, continuing with cochlear implants, I don't know if the movie did this on purpose because it's common. It's a common thinking of what cochlear implants do among hearing society. But he has a big misunderstanding of what cochlear implants actually do. He thinks that they are a cure. When he's talking to Lou, he's like, I'm gonna get my hearing back and da da da, we're gonna get the surgery and bam, it's all gonna be okay. But cochlear implants don't give you your hearing back. You're deaf when you get them. So I don't know if they did that on purpose. Was it the audiologist for not actually really explaining it correctly? Or was it Ruben just grabbing the words that he could and then shifting the definitions in his brain and thinking, yeah, that's what I want to hear. Which could completely be possible. Although someone told me that now that technology is more advanced and surgery is more advanced and da da da. Someone told me that now with cochlear implant surgery, you could actually keep the remaining hearing that you have. Maybe it depends on the type of surgery or the type of cochlear implant. I'm not exactly positive, but if anybody knows, leave that down in the comments. But also when your cochlear implant activates, it's not your natural hearing. So again, your hearing's not just gonna come back. It's just technology. I know they show that a little bit more in the video, but we're just talking about the beginning right now. There was something about Lou in the movie that m made me kind of uncomfortable. It's just the way that she would always look at Ruben as if he was having cancer and he was gonna die in a week and it made me so uncomfortable. I know she's scared for him because Ruben is like just he's completely out of it right now but still I was always just like why do you always look like he's about to die? I don't know it was just so weird to me but one of the things that annoyed me is that when they're talking to uh Hector she's obviously Ruben cannot hear anything that she's saying so she's on the phone with him and she has all this information that she's given from Hector and then she hangs up Ruben wants to know what's going on, and she's like, he's gonna call back. You know what that whole scene is right there? The equivalent of hearing people telling a deaf person or deaf people, I'll tell you later, or never mind. But in this case, it'll be like, I'll tell you later. It's annoying. If you're gonna have a conversation about your deaf partner, your deaf whoever, with you, relay the information. Don't just be like, I'll call back later. Because obviously you had information before he was gonna call you back. So don't do that. It's annoying. It's frustrating. Later on, Ruben ends up going to the deaf group home, if you wanna call it that. And you do find that there are deaf actors in the film playing deaf characters. Shaheem is actually playing himself. He's playing uh, the dancer that he is. And then you also see Lauren Ridloff, who will be in one of the new Marvel movies. You see Hilary Bach, and then you just see a, a whole bunch of other people. So that was very good to see. And I'm also glad that they had a part. You got to see them often and it wasn't just, oh, they're just gonna always be in the background here. So I like that at least. Oh yeah, hey, by the way, did you know they have these implants now? Yes, Ruben, we know. Hearing people have been shoving that down to people start since forever. <laughs> ah, hearing people in a sense. I love it. <laughs> So one big thing, you know that I've always been like, deaf, being deaf is not a bad thing. It comes with the struggles, sure, but overall being deaf is not a bad thing. You know, access inaccessibility is the problem. Not being deaf or being disabled in general. W with that said, when somebody who has grown up into their, I want to say early 30s, mid 30s, just guessing the ages here, and you've been hearing all your life and now all of a sudden your hearing is going like that and also you're a musician which typically you know society at large says that you have to be able to hear you need your hearing to be a musician which obviously is false we have lots of deaf musicians around but with that being said i completely understand when somebody is losing they're hearing and they're like, oh my god, I hate this, I don't know what to do, I'm freaking out. His reaction to that, I mean, even I have had that reaction, you know, even though I had a lot of deafness, I was hard of hearing or whatever, when I was younger, you know, then, you know, my hearing's progressive. So it continues to go and go and go every year. So it is 
something that people who experience that same thing would feel very uncomfortable with. They start freaking out. They hate it. And I completely understand that. So I'm not going to fault him for having this kind of attitude. Although, and just a suicide warning uh, for saying this, when he does say, I need a gun in my mouth, oh god, that, that hurt. Because obviously, you know, when, when you're talking to abled people, hearing people, whatever, they, they'll often tell you, sometimes they'll tell you, man, if I was you, I would kill myself. And it's like, Thank you for that. It's just one of those things. I understand why he's saying it. I get it. Doesn't hurt any less though. I'm just saying. So yeah, I'm not faulting that they wrote that in. I'm not saying they shouldn't have wrote that in. I'm just saying, damn, that hurts to see that. You know how I've talked about dinner table syndrome on this channel, meaning that you were the only deaf person at a table or an event, whatever. You were the only deaf person in the middle of all of these hearing people, right? And they don't sign. None of them usually. It sucks. It's a terrible feeling. You have no idea what's going on. And this is pretty much dinner table syndrome in reverse. You have the late deaf end man who knows no ASL and he's at this dinner table with all these fluently signing deaf people and it's just all everything's just going right by. It's the perfect way to show hearing people just what it's like. As someone who didn't start learning ASL until her early 20s, that was also me. <laughs> when I went to LA and was with the deaf community for the first time, I knew hardly anything. And yeah, it was very, very awkward during my stay. I had a great time, loved everyone, but to say that I didn't feel extremely awkward, inadequate, and out of place, Mm. Imagine trying to understand the directions to a game you know nothing about and they're only going to tell you in sign. Oh god. <laughs> and then we start to get more and more into Ruben, you know, getting immersed into deaf community, ASL, deaf culture. And his reaction is what I would expect from someone who just got shoved into this with no real choice. I hate it. I hate seeing it, but I know why he's doing it. He goes into Lauren's classroom, right? Or Diane, Diane is the character's name. And she's signing, he's like, oh, I don't do that. And she's signing her name and he doesn't understand it. So she writes it on the board. See, deaf people are so accommodating. We accommodate hearing people so much. Granted, he's like Devin, but st still, you know what I mean here, right? He's just, he, he's such a rebel in this, you want to call him that? And she's like, what's your name? And he's just using his voice and I just want to like, oh, I hate this. This is so annoying. But it is common, you know, there's a lot of commentary. There's a lot of non- oral deaf people, signing deaf people who would talk about how oral deaf people, and I know this, I, I, I was very hearing headed. You might even call me that now because I speak in most of my videos, but I've explained why. But he's just so disrespectful about it. He's just using his voice and just acting like, you know, you, you really tell he doesn't want to be here and he's making that known to everybody and it just sucks, especially because you're in a classroom with little kids. Right. The adults will be able to handle it. They've grown up enough. But the little kids are going to be like, it's just, it's not fun. When you're a little kid and you're like, oh, this guy doesn't want to be like us. Like, ugh. So it's going to make the little kids feel bad. When he finally takes the marker because he's trying to say his name out loud and Diane's like, no deaf classroom and he's being so rude like you would think oh no he's just okay he's just writing his name on the board but he's so aggressive about it and i just want to like that's rude that's very rude stop that also in jeremy's class i don't know what jeremy's character's name is in the film jeremy helped out with uh teaching riz asl i think and so he's also an asl teacher in the film ruben is just like refusing to take part in this and i'm just like can you please put in a little bit of effort and at least pretend to care. <laughs> but obviously he's not gonna do that. He is so adamant on being like, I'm not like these people, I'm not like these people. So I get why they have it like that, but I just, ah. Sir, I just wanna know what that donut did to you. Like, wh why'd you have to take the donut and smash it to death? That was a perfectly good donut and you just killed it. Damn, I would've eaten that donut. You just, fine. <laughs> 
course the movie's not all negative and da 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 and you know frustrating. Eventually it turns around. When they cut to the scene of Shaheem dancing. Yes, death dancers exist and Shaheem is a very talented one at that. And there's this kid in the front that's being disruptive. I'm, I'm sure there's a reason for that. He, he, he can't really sit still. He can't really get focused. Diane is trying to, you know, get him to pay attention, stop fidgeting around, whatever. And then Ruben's like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take this kid out. We'll, we'll go to the playground and, you know, chill out for a little bit, right? And they get out and they're on the slide and a little kid's, you know, doing some random beats on the slide. Ruben, naturally being the drummer that he is, something's clicking in his head and he's like, hey, let's start doing some drumming on the slide. And we pretty much started to go into a path of Ruben straightening himself up, finally getting himself immersed into everything. So you fast forward a little bit and then you see they're going on the field trip or something, they're going out, they're doing something, and Ruben's starting to learn a little bit more sign. He's doing at least basic conversation to everyone, Diane, the kids, he's smiling, he's laughing, he doesn't look miserable anymore, thank goodness. He's finally starting to accept that, hey, he's deaf now, he's accepting, hey, there are these people that are flourishing regardless. Being deaf is not a death sentence, despite the fact that autocorrect likes to switch it. But anyway, it's just so nice. And then again, remember that dinner table scene when it was like dinner table syndrome, but reversed. Now he's be he's able to follow along with everything. It's so nice to see. He's even getting involved. So not only is he understanding, but he's actually having a conversation. He's making friends with everyone. It's so nice. I love that. Minor pet peeve time. Is it minor? I don't know. But this happens a lot with movies where you have hearing directors and whatever. This happened at Switched Effect as well. Signing, why is it almost never in frame? Why? Like at one point later on in the movie when Joe and Ruben are talking and it's a very like stressful conversation, all of the signing is completely cut off. Don't do that. Even though you're not gonna show the whole entire line being signed because you're going back and forth between the characters to get facial expressions and whatnot, if you're gonna have someone signing, show the signing. I wish someone would have been, I wish a signing person would have been there to see and make sure everything was in frame. I don't know if there was or not, but that would have been nice. I just recently finished up a project a couple months ago waiting for it to release. It was made sure by my interpreter that, and acting help actually, she had multiple jobs. She made sure that the signing was in frame. So I can't tell you what that is yet, but it should hopefully come out in maybe two months, so stay tuned for that. But just keep the signing in the frame. Now, of course, you can't always have happiness last forever because now his desire, I don't know if it ever really left, but his desire to become hearing, quote, quote, once again, comes back full throttle because occasionally he sneaks into Joe's room to get on his computer and he wants to see what Lou is up to. Right, he, he just sees her and all of a sudden he's like, I need to get this cochlear implants. I need to get them now. Which by the way, another thing that the audiologist never covered in the beginning is that cochlear implants don't always work and it's a risk that you take and you don't really know until activation and even then there's lots of training involved. Like I know a couple people who have basically had failed surgeries because it actually ended up not really working for them. But anyways, so yeah, now he's selling everything that he has and he sneaks off and he gets his cochlear implant surgery. At least I can say this. I, at least me, I was content with how, at least for the most part, how they did with the activation scene. Way better than the inspiration. Baby hears for the first time videos that you see on Twitter, whether they're with hearing aids or cochlear implants, right? The inspiration point videos that make it seem like everybody's laughing and having a good time and people are crying and they're like, oh look, cochlear implants are miracles, ah, no. So what those videos never really show is just how they actually do work. And when it's activated in the movie, everything sounds very distorted. It sounds robotic and even they have to, you know, they're switching whatever it is to try to see if he can be able to hear something. And at first it's like, hey, that's okay. And then it's like, wow, that's a hell of a lot worse. And the doctor says, well, you know what? It's going to take a little bit, take it easy, at least four weeks. And also, hey, your ears still don't work, which I think was a good thing 
to say because again going back to what hearing society tends to think your hearing comes back Ruben thought his hearing was gonna come back and that's just not how it works it isn't natural hearing it's just technology tricking your brain into thinking that it's hearing something naturally fast forward even more and Ruben is now in France because he's trying to get Lou back they have this party and you would think hey Ruben's gonna go into this party and he's gonna be able to understand everything. He's been able to understand Lou's father pretty well. So the party should be very simple, right? No. The difference in understanding conversation between one-on-one -on -one conversation and a whole party, the difference is astronomical. With the one-on-one -on -one conversation in a quiet room, everybody's just making lunch and whatever, right? There's no background noises to really get distracted by or have muffled or have muffling anything. And it's, you're just focusing on one person. And now, that, does that mean you're gonna understand everything? No. <laughs> but it's a hell of a lot easier than when you're going to a party there's so much noise going around you. There's music, lots of chatter, and then you're trying to have a conversation, which, you know, you see Ruben going, could come again when the woman's just trying to ask him how he is. And then eventually he's like, yeah, cool. I'm going to go stand in a corner by myself because I can't comprehend anything. So common. That is me and a whole lot of other people at family events, at parties where everything is so hearing-centric. Ah, throw it back to YouTube parties like VidCon and Playlist, man. Only deaf person there. Yep. You can just tell that Lou is so over him. Like, she doesn't love him the same way, if at all, like she used to. And I don't actually, obviously she cares for him, but obviously, like, that love, I, I feel like, honestly, once he became deaf and then was in the program, it just kind of, it went poof. When they're trying to make out and stuff in her bed, it was just, it was so awkward. And obviously she's like, okay, I'm out. And ah, oh, God, I felt bad for him. And then fast forward to the end of the movie. He's like, okay, this obviously isn't going to work out. I'm going to go leave. And he's in a park and he's, the church bells are going and it's still distorted. Thank you, movie, for showing that nothing's so crystal clear right now. But he's listening to it. It's just not right. Nothing's going the way that he thought it was going to be. Remember, he thought he was gonna get his hearing back and everything obviously no he just looks and he's like you know what this might not be too bad being a deaf person without the system devices probably isn't too bad and he just takes them off and scene roll credits now with that all being said does that mean that coker implants are horrible devices and that they should be banned and nobody should ever get them no. Coker implants and hearing aids they are tools they are assisted devices and if a deaf person is old enough and can make that decision for themselves and they want it, their decision is completely valid. That's what I have to say about that. Overall, I thought it was a very good, I enjoyed the movie, honestly. There is one thing that kind of, kind of grinds my gears a little bit though. And it's like they completely threw away the option for him to explore music and to still become a drummer or still be a drummer. Sean Birdie is a drummer. You know, he was drumming at Switched at Birth. You have other deaf musicians playing other instruments. So he could still be playing the drums. And it's just like they completely took that out of his. Hi editing me from the future. I want to try to clarify this a little bit as, as much as I possibly can because really the movie doesn't take that option away completely. W what I'm really trying to say is that I, I would have liked to see them explore that option a little bit after that. Like even just a little like one minute epilogue, right? I wanted to see him still explore being a drummer without the need for the coker implant, without it being like, this whole entire mission for him was just because of Lou. And well, Lou and him are not together anymore. Lou pretty much was over him from the beginning when it all happened. You know, the whole time it was, I need to get my coker implant so Lou and I can do this. I need to sell everything I own, all of my equipment. And then he, he, he goes to get Lou and like, okay, great. Now I can make all this uh, money again and buy everything back. It's all because of Lou and I just want to see him drum for himself and be a drummer without needing the coker implants. Even if he uses the coker implants, I just wanted to see him realize he could still be a drummer and be deaf. Does that make sense? I didn't really, I, 
didn't really like it. I really would have liked to see Ruben and Shaheem become closer because Shaheem was the other guy that really liked music. And obviously in the movie they show that hey, deaf people can still enjoy music in the classroom with the little kids or the guy playing the piano and the kids are, you know, they put their hands on the piano and they're feeling the vibrations. At one point, Ruben is teaching them little drumming techniques on buckets. But to me, it's just not the same as if he and Shaheem had a closer friendship and Shaheem was just helping him out with that. I mean, the movie's already two hours long, so I feel like it'd be a three hour movie if they wanted to uh, incorporate that, if they didn't take out uh, other bits and pieces. But I feel like they did the movie dirty by not involving that. I don't know. You let me know. Do you think they just, they pretty much just threw out the option of him playing drums altogether anymore? Or, you know, do you think that his little ep epiphany, is that the word, at the end, maybe he's like, well, you know what? Being deaf isn't so bad. Maybe I will still play drums, but you don't really get that at the end. But I don't know. Maybe he'll think about it. But I feel like that part's missing. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. So those are my thoughts on the film. I enjoyed it for what it was. I really did. I enjoyed it the first time. I enjoyed it the second time. I know there's been some stuff since streaming where interviews have kind of been like, mm, but that that's, that's separate from this. That can be a conversation for another day. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Again, uh, this is just my opinion. Everybody else has their own. Other, other dead people enjoyed it. Other dead people did not. And all opinions are perfectly valid. But I want to know what you thought. So leave it down below. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Again, subscribe for future episodes if you would like. And I will see you later.